hi guys this is chevlin academy welcome to another video on structural loadings in today's video i'm going to be discussing about the loading on bridge deck in my previous section on structural loading i tried to explain the loadings you have to consider when you want to design a building slab so but today we'll be discussing about the bridge deck so before we go into discussion of the type of load that you can basically have in a bridge deck let's talk about the common design standard that you can use if you are someone that have been watching my video you know i majorly talk about two types of two design code which is either the british standard or the european standard even though the european standard supersede and try to replace the british code the british code is still used in some part of the world so that is why i still make content on british code so if you are someone that designed with the british standard for design of bridges you have to look at bs 5400 part 2 that discuss about the steel concrete and composite bridges specification for loadings but aside from this we have another code that is specifically for highway bridges loadings for highway bridges which is the most common one the bd3701 so this bd3701 comprises of extractions for bs code other bs code which can include extraction from 5400 extraction for bs6399 to in order to bring together all these loadings required for an highway bridge but if you are someone that designed with be with the euro code you have to consider en 1992 part 2 which is specifically for bridge design and also for loadings the traffic load on bridges you have to consider EN 1991 part 2 which discuss about traffic loads on bridges but you know loadings on bridges is not just the traffic load we have other types of load and this actually bring us to the load classifications on bridges so that is the deck loadings so we have two major type of loadings on bridge deck and one of them is the permanent load while the other one is a transient load so the permanent load are just load that are permanent on the L on the bridge deck so this include the dead load and the superimposed dead load the dead load differs from the superimposed dead load even though they are both dead load but dead load are loads which include the weight of all structural elements this include the weight of the bridge deck itself if they are connecting beams the weight of connecting beams and all of that so all the structural element weight is considered under dead load but superimposed dead load is the weight of all material on the bridge deck that are not structural elements example of this is the road surfacing you know the most common road surfacing we have is asphalt so the weight of the asphalt that is being laid on the bridge deck and if it is in case of a rail railway bridge you can even have the weight of the ballast and then the parapet in some other situations so those are the two permanent load that we have on bridge deck then let's now come to the transient load the most dominant one is the traffic load even though we have other ones which include the environmental load that we have the wind load earthquake loads in depending on the location then we have another load this is the construction load because during construction of the bridge there might be need for there is always need for erection depending on the method of construction that is being used so in that situation you need to make sure that during construction and after construction your bridge is still satisfy the design uh, specification so but the most dominant part of the traf transient load is the traffic loading and under this we have two types we have the primary vertical load and we have the secondary load so the primary vertical load are actually caused by weight of traffic on the road and this can include the pedestrian and the normal vehicular traffic or any other traffic so under this the general terms that we usually use as highway engineers or structural engineers or bridge engineers is the ha loading and the hb loading ha loading refer to loadings that represent the traffic in a normal situation normal traffic so the loadings that represent normal traffic is referred to as ha loading the loadings that re represent abnormal vehicle on the bridges is referred to as hb loading so most of the time we have a lot of combinations in which you can combine ha loading you can combine ha with hb 
though it depends on the kind of bridges you are designed we have a lot of combinations in which you can check the design standard that i've mentioned earlier to look at how to combine each of these live load with the permanent load and all of that then we have the secondary load the secondary load are load that are due to changes in speed or direction of the vehicle so this includes centrifugal braking skidding and also collision load so those are the two primary type of traffic load we have primary load and the secondary load so the most important one is the primary load how do we determine each of these loading for permanent load it is very easy to estimate permanent load why because the permanent load is just the weight of the materials it's for dead load the weight of the structural element for superimposed dead load weight of other elements that are not structural elements like surfacing ballast parapet and all of that so all you need to determine them is just for you to estimate the to to know the density of the material so if it is concrete now for the self weight of your bridge deck once you know the weight of the density of the concrete then you can determine this the dead load so in case of asphalt all you need to do is to know the density of asphalt then you can determine the superimposed dead load the permanent load is very easy to determine then we have the transient load this is actually more complicated compared to the permanent load and you have to follow the code specification and guidance for you to be able to properly determine the, the primary the primary load and also what is also important is the position of application because permanent unlike the dead load that you just apply it due to the weight just apply it over the whole structure because it's just the weight but in case of traffic load the the code specify modes in which you can apply this traffic load and this actually brought us to some definition of some terminologies that are majorly used in bridge loadings so that you can understand how to position or how to apply your primary live load which are the ha loading and the hb loading and this time are just three we have the carriageway width we have the notional lanes and we have the traffic lanes so by definition the carriageway width is just the width of all the of the running surface the width of all the running surface including traffic lanes shoulders and all of that so the whole width of the running surface the whole width of the of the bridge is referred to as the carriageway except the caps so you can just say the width between raised caps is referred to as your carriageway so but something similar to this that is very easy to understand is the traffic lane the traffic lane are the lanes that are marked on the running surface you know whenever you have a an highway you always have some markings that divide the carriageway into lanes so you can have two lane three lane and all of that depending on the width of the carriageway so these markings that divide the surface into lanes is referred to as the traffic lane but this traffic lane does not necessarily mean the notional lanes the notional lane is what is important to the structural engineer when you are loading the bridge deck it is not the traffic lane so this notional lane is just a part of the carriageway that is applied in such a way that it is used to apply the primary live load which are the ha loading and the hp loading you know i told you you don't just apply the ha and hb loading anyhow on the bridge deck there are specification on how and the position in which you have to apply them you can't just apply it all over so that is the definition for national lane so if you are someone that make use of the British standard, we have specification for national lane in which I'm going to show you in the next few minutes. But before I do that, if you love what I'm showing you, you can like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not subscribed. We have about 80% of people that actually watch our videos have not subscribed. Please try to subscribe so that others can also learn from it. So let's talk about national lanes because for you to be able to apply to load your bridge correctly you need to understand the terms national lane because this is the most one of the most technical parts of bridge loading or deck loading so according to the british standard we have this table for national lanes so when your carriageway is between 5 and 7.5 including 7.5 so this extract was extracted from bd3701 
the loadings for highway bridges so the code specify that you have your use you have to use two national lane that is if your bridge if your bridge carriageway is between five meters to 7.5 meters the, not, the number of national lane you should have is three so but when your carriageway is between 7.5 to 10.95 you can use three national lane when it's between 10.95 to 14.6 you can use four, four national lane and so on and so forth so this one is for the british standard but for the european standard the european standard is a little bit different so when your carriageway is uh when your carriageway is less than 5.2 5.4 referring to table 2 which is subdivision of carriageway into national lane using the euro code so when your carriageway with is less than 5.4 meters the number of national lane you can have is one lane one national lane you can see if you have five meters according to the british code if your carriageway is five meters the british code you should have two national lane but if your carriageway is one is five meters the european standard is recommending five national lane but look at what is interesting look at the width of the national lane the, the width of the national lane is three meters so you have five meters carriageway width the width of your national lane is three meter and you can only have one national lane so that means if you want to apply your primary loads you can only apply it along the three meter which is your national lane not the total length of the carriageway i hope you understand that and when your carriage carriageway width is between 5.4 and 6 then you have to have two national lane according to the european code and you have to apply it over the whole area because you can see that the remaining width in this situation is zero so when you have between 5.4 and 6 you have to apply it over the whole length but when your lane is greater than 7 which greater than 6 which is what we have most time for a two lane highway most of the time we have greater than 6 so in that situation you have to apply you can see that your national lane width is taken as 3 meters so according to the you could you can say your national lane is always three meter but for the british standard it is not always three meter but according to the british code when your lane is more than two when you have two lane national lane no, uh, national lane the width the, the size of the national lane the width of individual national lane must not be must not be more than 3.65 you know 3.65 is the standard length of of a lane in uh according to the british code 3.65 is the standard length of a lane of an highway lane so when the when you have more than two national lane the individual width of each national lane should not be more than 3.65 so that is the specification so this is what i have for you under bridge decking i've tried to explain the different type of loadings to have which are the permanent load and the transient load under the permanent load we have the dead load and the superimposed this is for bridge deck this does not actually cover the whole bridge because we also have some other kind of loadings that are not really necessarily applied to the deck which include the earth filling and all of that so if you like this video kindly hit the subscribe button turn on the notification share with your friends i will see you in the next time